الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين ونستهدي ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون ما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله خير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم شر الأمور محدثاتها كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار إن شاء الله we start with this we have a lot of material try to cover before uh, tonight إن شاء الله so I can finish with this uh, this subject and we proceed in December إن شاء الله after Hajj Last time we spoke about the types of uh, people who are in debt. The people, or the Medionin, uh, the people who are in debt are different, three different types. As we said, we said the Mu'sir, and that is the one who got nothing. Mu'sir is someone who's in debt but got nothing. And uh, we said Mumatil is the person whose money is more than his debt. His money is more than his dain. But if he doesn't want to pay, that is called Mumatil. We can call him Mumatil. He doesn't want to pay. He has the money, but he doesn't want to pay his, his debt. Uh, we said that is uh, the second type. And the third type, we said uh, Muflis. And Muflis is the one who's debt more than his money. If he was to pay his debt, then it will uh, swallow all his money, and still he will not be done. And that is the bankrupt or the Muflis. And tonight, inshallah, we will talk about how Islam, how Islam deals with every situation, okay? If you're mu'sir and you have to pay money, if you're, and you are in debt, if you are muflis and you're in debt, if your money is more than your debt, that means you can pay it and you don't want to pay it. What is the situation and what is Islam says about that? And this religion is, is, is a comprehensive one, as we all know, alhamdulillah. So we start, inshallah, ala barakatillah. Qala al-muallif ibn Qudama rahimahullah. When kana al-dayna halan ala mu'sir, wajaba indara. Fain al-da'a al-i'sara, halafa, wa khulliya sabiluhu illa ni'rafa lahu malun qabla dhalika, fala yuqbalu qawluhu illa bibayyina. Fain kana mu'siran, lazimahu wafa'u. Fain aba, hubisa hatta yuwafi'u. فإن كان ماله لا يفي بدينه كله فسؤل فسأل غرماءه الحاكم الحجرة الحجر عليه لزمه جابر. so when كان الدين حالا على معسر وجب انظار. that is the first rule. we said the معسر now we're talking about the معسر. معسر is the one who has nothing. he has no money to pay his 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 debts. okay. and when we talk about debt that doesn't only mean money he borrowed. okay. What is the right thing? Every, every loan is debt or every debt is loan? Every loan is debt. Every loan is debt. كل قرض دين. ولكن ليس كل دين قرض. Not every debt is loan. You are, when you are in debt, that doesn't mean you borrowed money. You can be, that is one way to be in debt, by borrowing money. But also you could have bought something and you didn't pay for it. That is debt. You bought something financing over a year. You paid a couple of months and you stopped. You are in debt. You bought a house and you stopped paying. You are in debt. Okay? More stuff. So, but when you borrow, you are in debt automatically. Okay? So every loan, every borrowing and lending is a debt. But not every debt happens as a result of a loan. Okay? It can be a result of buying and selling. Can be a result of renting. You rented a house and you didn't pay. The you didn't pay for a couple of months. Automatically you are in debt. Alright? So it can be many different ways. So now when someone is in debt, okay, whether he borrowed money, whether he can he, he bought something and he's not paying for it, whether he's renting and he's not paying his rent, whatever, he's in debt. So the person that money should be paid to, which is the lender, if we can use the term lender but not necessarily only a lender. I, the lender, the, buy, the seller, could be if it's a selling and buying transaction, could be uh, the renter, the guy who, who owns the apartment and who rented it to you, 
and as a result you're not paying, you are in debt. The person who's entitled for his money, that is Dan. If he comes to the person that owes the money, Medin, and that person is Mu'sir. Mu'sir means he has nothing. It's a mandatory. In Islam, it's mandatory that you give him time. You give him time. It's a wajib. Okay? It's a must that you give him time. When kana daynu halan, meaning if it's the, 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 the debt is due, it's time to pay. And you come to the, you agree with him that next month you pay me. On the 15th of next month you pay me. And you come to him in the 15th and he got nothing. And we will talk about how you prove that. He got nothing. He doesn't have money. He doesn't have property. He doesn't have anything to pay you back. All right? Then it's mandatory upon you to give him time. All right? To give him. Because there is no other choice. What is the other choice? Complain about him? Take him to the judge? What are you going to do? Put him in jail. He got nothing. And you put him in jail, you make his misery even worse. And even the chance for you to get your money is almost impossible. If you let him free, he will have a chance to work, make some money, and pay you. But you put him in a cell or you put him in jail, how are we going to pay him? How are we going to take care of his family? You're going to make him more stressed and all that. All right? So you understand? So it's mandatory. Even some of the ulama said, if you ask him for a penny, for dirham, and he gives it to you, he manages to get it, he had to borrow whatever it is, that dirham is haram. It's haram. Because you were not allowed to ask him. Okay? We call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَإِنْ كَانَ ذُو عُسْرَةٍ فَنَظِرَةٌ إِلَى مَيْسَرًا And if he is in a hardship, if he is mu'sir, mu'sir is the person who cannot pay. He doesn't have anything. This person we're talking about. This person we're talking about, Mu'sir, doesn't have anything to pay back his debt, all right, to pay you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if that is the situation, then Nadiratun ila Maysar. Then give him a chance, give him time until things get easier. That is wajib. Okay, that is wajib. يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى وَأَن تَصَدَّقُوا خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ أَن تَصَدَّقُوا يعني الصدقة meaning to forgive him. If you forgive him, that is even better. Okay? To forgive him is even better, if you would know. So, forgiving is recommended to waive his debt. But you're not mandated, you're not obligated to do that. But to give him time, so he can manage, then that is mandatory. That is a must. And there are a lot of hadith about that. يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم حديث أبو قتادة من سره أن ينجيه الله من كرب يوم القيامة فلينفس عن مؤمن عن معسر أو يضع عنه whoever wants Allah سبحانه وتعالى to make it easy for him on the day of judgment then let him give a break to a معسر معسر means someone who doesn't have anything to pay back his debt okay أو يضع عنه or to forgive him completely either to Give him a break or to forgive him completely. ويقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم حديث حذيفة تلقت الملائكة رجلا ممن كان قبلكم فقالوا له هل عملت خيرا قط that the angels the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in Bukhari and Muslim the angels tried to talk to someone who died from before us a man and they're now the reckoning asking him question they ask him is there anything good that you've done did you do anything good in your life he said no. قال لا قالوا تذكر to remember try to remember he said كنت داين الناس فأمر فتياني أن ينظر المعسر وأن يتجوز عن الموسر alright فقال الله عز وجل نحن حق بذلك منك فتجاوز الله عن طيب so that the man said when they told him the angels told him remember he said, I used to lend people money, or I used to give loans to people, or whatever debt it was that he would give to the people. 
and he will tell the people working for him when it's time to collect. If you come to someone who's mu'sir, he doesn't have anything, just give him some time, give him a break. And the mu'sir also, like, don't make it tough on him. Tajawwazu an mu'sir. فقال الله عز وجل نحن وحق بذلك من We are more worthy to do that from you. فتجاوز الله عنه. So Allah سبحانه وتعالى forgave him. That was the only good thing he used to do. Alright? That was the only good thing he did. So Allah سبحانه وتعالى forgave him. ويقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من أنظر معسرا أو وضعا أبى الله الله في ظله يوم لا ظل إلا ظل. حديث حسن صحيح الترمين. Prophet said that whoever give a break to someone who's mu'sir. Now we all know what mu'sir means. I don't need to translate it. Someone who doesn't have anything to pay his debt. Whoever gives him a break. Okay, someone who wants money from him. It's due. And he comes to ask for his money and he tells him, I don't have anything to pay you. Give me a break. Give me some time. So he tells him, I give you some time. So whoever does that or forgive, waive that, that debt, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should shade him on the day of judgment with his shade subhanahu wa ta'ala. On a day there is no other shade. Now, the problem with this is those who don't want to pay, they will say we're mercy. And how many people will lie for that? People don't care anymore. He will swear, whatever. Okay? So what did Islam do to prove this? How can we prove that someone is mercy? Okay. يقول ابن قدامة رحمه الله فإن ادعى الإعسار حلف وخلي سبيله إلا أن يعرف له مال قبل ذلك If he claims that he's معسر okay. This person coming to collect your money He says I'm معسر okay. I can't pay it's, it's hot here You should know Who wouldn't if you don't know, who would know? All right. So, so if this person claims to be a mu'sir, how are we going to verify that? He has to swear. Now, how many people will swear? They told the thief, swear. Get <laughs> Right? They told the thief, swear. He said, finally, I'm out. He's going to swear. He doesn't care. All right, those people don't care about their their swearing, you know. Like uh, mentioned in Sahih, where Isa alayhi salam saw a man stealing, so he said, "Ittaqillah." How can you steal? So the thief said, "I swear I did not steal." فقال عيسى عليه السلام آمنت بالله وكذبت عيني. عيسى عليه السلام respect. The swear, he understand the meaning of swear and how dangerous it is. it is. Some people are willing to forfeit and waive their rights so they don't have to swear. So they don't have to swear. They're willing. They know if they would swear, it's over. They'll get what they want. But they will not swear because they raise themselves beyond that. Because of the seriousness of swearing. That's why Yamin al-Ghamus one of the, the one of the swearing, the lying when you swear lyingly and the zur ghamus sumia ghamus and lianna tagami so sahibaha fin now. Ghamus, yamil ghamus, that kind of swearing when you're lying. Ghamus meaning to 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 dunk, to dip. It's called yamin dipping, or if I could translate it like that, because it dips the one who uses it in the hellfire. Serious matter. Alright? So this person will be told to swear. So he will swear. But that is not enough. If that person or this person who swore was known to have money, all right, then we need more bayin. We need more evidence that he is mu'sir. Okay? And some of the ulama or a lot of the ulama say you need two witnesses. You need two witnesses to testify that he is indeed mu'sir. But the opinion, Allahu alam, that uh, Imam, ibn, I think Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn Khayyim uh, supported was three. You need three. And that is based on the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said in part of the hadith that only three kinds of people have the right to beg. 
only three types of people have the right to ask for money. So if you are not one of those, then what the money you're getting is suhd. Suhd, meaning haram. Who are those? One of them, man hamala hamala. Which means, what they used to do in the past, when two tribes might fight each other, because of whatever reason, one of the people will jump in and say, I will take care of it, to prevent the war. Okay, I will pay you this amount of money, he will tell one tribe. For example, one tribe had someone who was killed by the other tribe, so they want to fight. So one will jump and will say, the diya is on me. To stop the war. But he might not have money to cover it up. So he will go, he can ask for money. So the reason that is justified for him to ask for money is because he prevented a munk, he prevented bloodshed. All right? And the other one is someone who had a disaster that happened to him that took all his money. So he is allowed to ask, He's allowed to ask so he can survive. That's how much he can ask to survive, to be able to survive. Assalamu alaikum. Seven, seven. We said seven. We said seven, right? Seven targets. Yeah. Seven targets. I believe you and I disbelieve my ears. <laughs> and the third person is very much someone who went bankrupt. Mu'sir. He doesn't have anything. Okay? In our terms, bankrupt, meaning he doesn't have anything. But here we have different details. Mu'sir is different than bankrupt. So he's Mu'sir. And he brings three people from his, from his qawm, his own people, to testify that he's Mu'sir. So the hadith, Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, used this hadith as a proof that you need three people for a Mu'sir. All right? Three people to testify that he is Mu'sir to be eligible. And that is the hadith of, uh, of Qabis ibn Mukharaq al Hilali. قال إن المسألة لا تحل إلا لأحد ثلاثة وذكر منهم رجل أصابته فاقة حتى يقول ثلاثة من ذوي الحجاء فلان أصابته ثلاثة فلان أصابته فاقة حتى يقول ثلاثة من ذوي الحجاء فلان أصابته فاقة so someone who calamity took over his money, took over him, he's in a bad situation now, he doesn't have until three from his people. people three people who? People who are in front of the court, who, whose job is to go in and testify for you, Zur, so you can give them $10? No. That will hijab. All right? People that, meaning they have hujj. People that respectful. People are that credible. All right? Okay? Credible doesn't mean they have good credit. Credible, <laughs> credible means they're trustworthy. They won't lie. Some people don't lie. You cut his neck, he won't lie. All right. So three people with credit, all right, good credit. Those are the people who testify, and that is the opinion of three three witnesses. So once that happens, when he can provide three people, then it becomes haram for you to ask him for your. Your, your loan or your debt because he cannot pay, he cannot afford it. Got it? We understand? That is the mercer. That is the mercer. Fqal al muallif, fain kana musiran lazimahu wa fa. Now we move to the next one. The next person is the one who, whose money is more than his debt. That means he can afford to pay off his debt, but he doesn't want to. No. He doesn't want to pay. As they said before, he's slacking. He run away. When he sees on the caller ID the person who he owes money, he doesn't answer. Or he might give it to his little kid or daughter or son and tell him, Daddy, tell him Daddy's not here. Right? He will do that. Yeah, he you see him from far, he makes a U-turn and, and run. Some people like that. Some people live want to live with other people's money. That is one of the worst characters. Okay? And there is a great warning from the Prophet regarding such people. 
من أخذ أموال الناس ينوي سدادها سد الله عنه ومن أخذ أموال الناس ينوي إتلافها أتلفه الله He who takes the money of people with the intention to pay it back Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pay it back for him Allah will help him Allah will make it easy for him Some people might borrow from you a dollar He will not rest and you might even Give, you might have given it to him and you did not want it. But he will not rest until he gives it back to you. Okay? And some people, he might take a million dollars and thinks he's entitled to it. You owe him. And he might and you might never see him. Okay? So very important that we don't like that. So a person like that who doesn't want to paint, but he has the capacity, he has the capability to paint, what's the situation with him? This person is mandated to pay it. He must pay it. He has no choice. All right? He has no choice. When it's due, it's, he has no choice. What if he doesn't? If he doesn't want to pay it, all right? Or he denies or whatever. لَيُّ الْوَاجِدِ يُحِلُّ عِرْضَهُ وَشِكَايَتُهُ أو عُقُوبَتُهُ لَيْ يعني المماطلة So لَيُّ الْوَاجِدِ يعني A person who has and he choose not to pay He drags it He doesn't want to pay He avoids you Okay لَيُّ الْوَاجِدِ يُحِلُّ First of all عِرْضَ قال يعني بعض العلماء عرضه يعني شكايته. Someone who has money to pay his debt, but he doesn't want, he's dragging, he's running away, he's avoiding. The Prophet said, such behavior makes his عرض halal, meaning you can complain about it. يحل عرضه وعقوبته. عقوبته يعني حبس. So what happens to this person is you complain to him, you complain about him to Hakim. Usually when you write, in, when you read in the books of Fuqa, the word Hakim, you know Hakim can be like the, the, the top person in a country or in a society or whoever, the president, the king. But usually in the books of Al-Fiqh, Al-Hakim means Al-Qadi. Right? Qadi. Qadi is the judge. Okay? So you complain to Hakim, and Hakim has the right to put him in jail. Put him in jail. Usually when someone will realize that he might end up in jail, well, pay. So pay with honor. No. Okay? He has to be humiliated. And the dragging of the rich person, when the rich person is in debt and he start dragging and avoiding, that is born oppression. The Prophet calls it. Now the third one, and that is in Muflis, the bankrupt. Okay, what do we do with the bankrupt? Someone whose money is less than his debt, but he has money. He has property. He has a house. He has car. He he has some money, but if he if he sells everything he has and try to pay off his debt, he cannot pay the whole thing. That is al-muflis. That is the meaning of, of, the, of the bankrupt. All right. Let's see what Ibn Qudama, rahimahullah, said about this. فَإِنْ كَانَ مَالُهُ لَا يَفِي بِدَيْنِهِ كُلِّهِ فَسَأَلَ بُرَمَاءَهُ الْحَاكِمَ الْحَجْرُ عَلَيْهِ لَزِمُهُ جَابِ now we are talking about the main topic of this section, and that is al-hajr. And we said before, uh, that means al-hajr, in the language means al-tadiyq wal manat to, to make it, to strict it on someone, to make it tight on someone, to prevent him. And when we talk about it in fiqh, in this situation, we are talking about preventing someone from having access to his money. All right? If you can use the term, the, the contemporary term that is money freezing or acid freezing, but it's not accurate. 
All right? Because the point or the purpose of the the purpose, the purpose of money freezing in our situation and what the fuqaha talk about is to freeze it with him and pass it to someone else, to the lenders, to the sellers, to the people he owes money to. Usually to this terms, asset freezing usually gives you the, the impression the money is being frozen somewhere. Freezing, no one will touch. But that is not the situation. Meaning he's hijab, meaning he's prevented from having access to his money or using his money. Once the hakim or the qadi uh, issues the verdict or issues the 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 the, the hukum or the ruling, that's it. This person doesn't have the right even to spend his own money. Right? Eh? That is in muflis. All right? Now, when does that happen? Everyone who has money and who, owe, who owes money and what he owes is more than what he has, does he have to go through this? No. Who goes through that? Who, who, will go, who will go through the hedge? Who will have to go under this? No, no, this person has less money than his debt. But does that automatically mean that he will have to go through this? That he will have to get his money frozen or his assets freezing? No. No. Who will? No. Huh? The time this takes place, the hajj that we're talking about, when person prevented from using his money, and that money will automatically transfer to the lenders, to the sellers, to whoever he owes money to, when they complain. But if, how many? A lot of people won't complain. A lot of people won't take a Muslim to court. A lot of people won't do that, right? Okay. A lot of people will think it's not worth. It. He might be even relative. He might be a friend. He might be buddy buddy, right? Not everyone. Once they complain, then it becomes mandatory on the qadi, on the judge, to go along with the proceeding. He has to proceed. He has to proceed and freeze this person's money. Once they, even if it's only one, what does that mean? He, maybe a lot of people, he owes a lot of to, money to a lot of people. Even if one of those asks for that, the qadi has to go through. Yeah? Very important. <clears throat> and we mentioned last time about the Prophet Sallam did that with the money of Mu'ad. Mu'ad al Jawa radiallahu anh. The Prophet Sallam did that. He Mu'ad had owed money. The Prophet Sallam made hajjah or freezing of his money so he can and he paid off the lenders. So it is in the Sunnah. And also in, in Muqtah Malik. Uh, at the time of Khilafah of Umar, there was a man from Juhayna, tried, uh, he, every time he, this person, every time he will hear about a fast camel, fast horse, whatever it is, he will go buy it. Why? So he can get to Hajj before anyone else. <laughs> every time he'll hear something like a, a fast running camel, he will go buy it. Alright, 2009 camel. Or 1400 Hijri camel, whatever it is. <laughs> Every time he hears that, he will rush to buy. So he got in debt. And those things are expensive. Okay. So when they when they complained to Umar bin Khattab about him, the Prophet وسلم, or Umar bin Khattab radiallahu an, took over his money. And he said, whoever, uh, whoever wants money from this person or whoever this person owes money to. He should come to us, so we will pay him from this person's money. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so that's the deal from the Sunnah with Mu'ad, the Prophet said with Mu'ad, and this is the deal from the Khilafah of Umar, رضي الله عنه. Okay. <coughs> now. It's very important, again, to emphasize the point. If you don't need to borrow, don't borrow. If you don't need to be in debt, don't be in debt. 
even as we mentioned when we talked about the day, we said some of the ulama said it's haram. Some of the ulama said it's makro. Regarding the person who's borrowing, we said regarding the person who's lending, it's mustahab for him to lend someone. But regarding the borrower, some of the ulama said it's makro. Why? Because of all the warnings of the person who borrows money if he doesn't need, or the person who ha who's in debt and dies, all these things, the hadith, so they said it's, you should avoid it as much as you can. All right? But sometimes it's not avoidable. So that's why the Prophet said them when the man came to him, to, to telling him he wants to marry a woman, he said, what you have for her as a dowry, mahr? He said, nothing. He said, can you give her a, a ring of a brass from brass, in hadith? He said, I can't. Can't afford it. He said, how much you memorize from the Quran? He said, this ayah, this surah, and this surah. Whatever. So the Prophet said, then that's her map. You teach her this surah. Ayy? But the Prophet never told him, go <coughs> borrow a few dharaim or a few dinania. He didn't tell him that. من استطاع منكم الباء فليتزوج فلمن أمن من يصل عليه بالصيام فإنه جن who can who can the process and advice the youth and advice us whoever can afford to get married let him go and get married who can't let him fast but the point is he did not say who can't afford it let him borrow you know uh, never forget uh, one of the brothers came to uh, to, 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 to be treated in my clinic and uh, I treated him whatever he needed and then when it's time to pay I gave him a break but yet he usually that's what happens with the Muslims they have to beg unfortunately you give them a big break they go to a cafe they don't negotiate but they come to you you give them a huge break and yet they still want even more and they start bargaining I mean they embarrass you so uh, and it's not nice so he started bargaining. So whatever he said at the end, I said, okay, that's fine. Sometimes you want, you, want, you want to give them a break because they might be in hardship. What happened at that time, the same time, there was another uh, Muslim in the clinic who knew this person. So when he walked in, he said, yeah, this uh, brother just married his son last or his daughter last week. And he borrowed $70,000 on his credit card for the wedding. So I said, bring him back so we can give him back the money he paid. <laughs> yeah? So that is the situation. 70,000 on credit card, on haram, on riba. Why? Because they like to brag for no reason. No reason. Food is wasted and time is wasted and money. Only those people who own these places are bad. But it's sad, you know? So don't borrow if you don't need. If you don't need. If you go to propose to a girl and they ask you, wherever you are, they ask you for, for fifty and sixty thousand dollars wedding and all that, get up and walk out. If that is the beginning. What is that? What's coming? Alright? Be aware. Be aware. So very important. That's why I call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِيَسْتَعْفِرِ الَّذِينَ لَا يَجِدُونَ نِكَاحًا حَتَّى يُغْنِيَهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلٍ Those who cannot find money to get married, then they should uh, abstain. That's it. Ask Allah for protection until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for them. And He didn't ask them to, to bar. Okay. وَيَقُولِ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ سَلَّمْ مِنْ حَجَّةِ الْوَدَاعِ إِنَّ دِمَاءَكُمْ وَعَوَاضَكُمْ وَأَمْوَالَكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ حَرَامْ كَحُرْمَةِ يَوْمِكُمْ هَالَ فِي شَهْرِكُمْ هَالَ فِي بَلَدِكُمْ هَالَ Prophet in the last sermon, he makes it clear, all right, in the day of Arafah, he makes it clear that your arab, your honor, and your money, and your blood is haram on each other. Haram to take advantage of it, haram to steal it, haram to shed it. The sanctity and the hurma of that day, the day of Arafah, the hurma of that month, the month of the hijjah, the hurma of that balad, balad al-haram. All right, so be aware. So now, it's time for Aisha, right? So inshallah, we, we I think well, everyone here is like, they come for the lecture, so it's, <laughs> all right.
our dear brothers in there who are waiting for the Salah? No? So we should talk a little bit more? Yes. Alright. I mean, we, pr we plan to continue after. So they can attend with us. If we're in time, then we don't like to, to annoy anyone. Alright. So we'll talk about Hukm al Muflis, the bankrupt, and how Islam deals with it. Qal al Musannif rahimahullah. In can al Malu or Malu who lay a fee bidaini he could live, a sala or a ma who hack him al Hajra alayhi lazima who jabbed. That's what we already talked about. If his money cannot pay off all his debt, and those people who, who, ha, who, who are entitled for their money, Ask the judge, ask the hakim, the qali, the judge, okay? If they ask him to freeze this person's money, all right? Then the judge becomes obligated to do so. Okay. What, who, usually the hakim, we said in the books of fiqh, is the judge. When they talk about the khalifa or the amir al-mu'mini or the president, what they refer to? What term? Huh? Yeah, but there is one, one word to turn. Al Hakim al Khali. In the books of Fiqh, Al Hakim is Al Khali. Al Iman, Al Iman. All right, Al Iman. That's extra. فَإِذَا حَجَرَ عَلَيْهِ لَمْ يَجِزْ أَوْ لَمْ يَجِزْ تَصَرُّفُهُ فِي مَا Once the the Khali, all right. Uh, issues the, the, the hukm and issues the, the verdict that there is hajr on, or freezing for this person's money, this person is not allowed to use his money <coughs> automatically, okay? He's not allowed to have access to his money, meaning to use it, all right? To use it. وَلَمْ يُقْبَلْ إِقْرَارُهُ <clears throat> All right. So you see that the situation when this takes place in Hajjah is when some, when people complain. All right, when the people complain, so it doesn't happen automatically. The government doesn't look for those who have less money than what they owe and issues these things on against them. All right, it happens when someone someone complains about. It. Now, when we talk about he cannot use his money. Now he has access to it, he has money, and remember there were no banks then when they wrote these books. So that means your money is in your house, your money is in your pocket. And this is hukum shari'i. A believer has to abide. Hukum shari'i. And Allah is watching over you. So when the qadi says you cannot use your money, then it becomes between you and Allah. So once you use your money, it's haram. You're committing haram. Even the ulama and the scholar said he cannot even use his money in sadaqah because it's not his right. He cannot take money and give sadaqah. Some of the ulama, like Imam Ahmed, said if it's a little, you know, if it's tamra, if it's this, something very little, like a dollar, two dollars, five dollars. But some of the ulama went to the extreme. They said not even a penny because little to a little adds up. All right? Because he's not entitled for that money anymore. That's not his. That is the people who he, who he owes money to. Alright? So it becomes hukum shari'a. It becomes a hukum and a sharia that he has to abide by, by, by when it comes by by the judge. So Imam Ahmed, how do you in Medina with a shaykh? He said, how do you do with a shaykh? He said, how do you do with a shaykh? Imam Ahmed, when he was asked, the person who's like bankrupt, can he give salafah? He said, give salafah a little bit like a piece of bread or similar to that. All right. <clears throat> now, I have a question. Yeah. So this person uh, is all of it frozen? Can he you know, feed his family? Or? Yeah, we'll talk about it. That's coming. No one says he should starve. All right, we'll talk about it. All right, so let me just, that is one situation, one scenario. He cannot even give salah. So imagine anything else. All right, some people might, when he doesn't feel Allah, when this is the issue, he goes and he takes all his money and uh, gives hibah to someone, to his wife, 
I give you this money. All right? Gift. Now it's not his, it's her. That is haram. So he can avoid such thing. All right? So very important. <clears throat> now, how he pays is how it happened. Now, it ha who who gonna take charge of paying this this debt? He cannot. Now, when the when the qadi issues this statement that that your money is frozen and we gonna take take care of it, he doesn't have even the right to take the money and pay it off to the people who complained. That's it. He doesn't have any right. So who will distribute the money? Qadi. Qadi. Qadi will, yes. Qadi will take over all the money and he will start distributing. And distributing such money comes in order as well. There are people who are going to get money before other people. Some kind of people will get money before other types. Alright? Huh? When you go the most? No. Good try. Uh, and that's what we will talk about, inshallah, after summer. Let's just pray and uh, respect the message before we get fired. <clears throat> I'm just pausing. Mm -hmm.